Well, the new album, Hell Unleashed, is only a few weeks away now. It will be a few weeks until it comes out. Yep. <laughs> this is a, a big album in the history of Evile, obviously. It's the four, it's, sorry, the fifth one. And um, so this is kind of your black album, if you like. You can go to extinction. <laughs> no, <laughs> no pressure. Uh, obviously, it's been eight years since the last album, though. Yep. Um, and things have changed, um, obviously, within the band in that time. Um, musically, with all the changes, how, how different is uh, Hell Unleashed from Skull? Um, it's faster, right? More aggressive. Um, it's more of a return to our roots, really, in terms of the thrash element. Um, but at the same time, it's more it's a it's a progression, as all of our albums are, of of everything that we do when we learn and mature ourselves as musicians. In between, you know, one album to another, I think this is the strongest album we've ever done musically, definitely. Um, whereas vocally and in terms of how the vocals are delivered, it's it's harkening back to early days of Enter the Grave and probably Infected Nations to a certain element. There's a lot more darker themes involved. It's a lot more adolescent in terms of vocals and the two tie together really well. It's the album we've always wanted to make, I think. Nice. Yeah. And... Um... Obviously, this is the first one with all on vocals. Yeah. Um, who has his own uh, vocal delivery, obviously, is, but it's not a million miles away from Matt. Um, yeah. Do you think he was the, the best person to take over the vocal position? Yeah, I mean, with Matt, unfortunately, leaving the band and deciding to step away, we were in no man's land, really, because I think the hardest person to replace is, is, is in a band is the front man. And I've always said Matt was our James Hetfield in terms of the technical aspects he could play on guitar combined with the other completely different stuff he was doing with his voice at the same time. Not many people can do that kind of complicated stuff that Matt did. Um, so we knew we were going to have trouble finding a, a competent front man, A, to go over well with the fans, and B, to just actually play the material right. It, it was, you know, it was a bit of a bad situation. So we banded ideas around between us and um, all just said, well, how about I do it? And at first we, we kind of laughed a little bit and then we thought about it a bit more and realised it's the, it was the perfect solution. He knows all the songs anyway, vocally. Um, you know, he, he co-wrote pretty much everything. And obviously his guitar works second to none. He can still play the lead stuff. So that left us with a different... Um, a different problem in who would we get to play the rhythm guitar parts mm -hmm. um to which i suggested adam uh, adam smith from riptide okay. uh, he's been a huge fan of the band for a long time he's a very very competent guitarist he's a very very competent lead guitarist and um that was the perfect key to the puzzle really so once we'd made those adjustments hall had to kind of figure out his vocal delivery and how he was going to present the vocals and because he's Matt's brother, the tonal qualities and presentation of his voice were pretty much the same anyway. The only thing that wasn't there is the range and the um, possibly a little bit of sustain, but that's something you can teach. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And it was, it was less of a job to teach that than it is to teach someone the entire back catalogue on rhythm guitar and vocals. So it was a perfect solution, really. Mm. Uh, it worked around really, really well. Uh, going to Ol's vocal style, yeah, he's he's a little bit different to Matt. Um, he wants to be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more guttural, and that suits the new material better, I think, than, yeah. than potentially Matt's style would have done in terms of how clean his voice was. That's not to say that Ol can't do that if he no. wants, but it's just this this album dictates that the material needs to be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I think people could hear that as well. Like I said, they're not a, a million miles apart from each other, but if you, if you want to compare them vocally, like you say, Matt was probably a little bit more in a James early James Hetfield style, or maybe early Tom Mariah. I think with Ol, he can do a slightly more like Schmier. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. 
Yes, Ramirez and potentially a little bit Max as well. Max Cavalera, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a bit of light and dark, I think. And like I said, for the for the stuff that we've written for this new album, it suits it perfectly. It needed that visceral delivery, I think. Yeah. Um, like you mentioned, this is the first album with Adam on guitar as well. Um, like you say, he's been a fan for a long time. Was, the, was he an easy gel with the rest of you as musicians? Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think at first there was a little bit of um, apprehension, a little bit of anxiety maybe on his part, just because he's got huge shoes to fill. Yeah. Um, but he's... He's taking it in his stride because because of his musical ability. He doesn't have to worry about anything. He's, like I said, he's more than competent um, to play the parts we need him to play. And obviously going forward, he'll have more and more input on songwriting. And just his, his, um, his overall demeanour and his sense of humour and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It'll shine through in time. I think at the minute it's still early days and we've, we've yet to do any gigs with him. So... Um, Everything's everything's great now, and I'm sure everything will be great going forward. He's a great guy to have in the band. We wouldn't have picked him otherwise, because yeah. the whole thing of you know you have to travel with the people that you're in a band with all the time and be away from home with and all that kind of stuff. I think he knows he's in good hands with us, and we know that we're in good hands with him. It's a mutual mutual bit of respect, really. Absolutely, sounds good. Um, well, getting onto the album itself. Um, hmm somewhat the like you mentioned before it's a little bit more in the vein of end of the grave or um uh, infected nations and on that note you've actually brought back uh, michael whelan to do the artwork for this one yeah. now of course the two uh, covers are very very different i think infected nations arguably um busier um yeah. Hell yeah. is more kind of direct if you like. so do you think having a, a direct style um represents this album well very much so, and I think I think we need something that sets it apart from everything else we've done, um, and also makes it stand out on a shelf, you know, in a, in a store or online or anything like that. We wanted something not cluttered, and we wanted something in that classic art style again. Yeah. So Michael was the obvious choice, um, and he actually had some artworks that he, you know, we commissioned and stuff like that, and he allowed us to choose a few ideas. And then when we narrowed it down, we just signed, we just kind of said, "Yeah, that's the one." It in, in, instantly struck us as suiting the the material on the new album, and the color scheme was right. It was everything we wanted, and we knew we could we we knew we could work off the back of it. If that makes sense, we knew it would translate well to posters, t-shirts, other kind of merch, and we knew we could make that image our own. You know, so it was really really good of Michael to let us use that artwork because. I'd hope, hope in the future that people see it and instantly think of us. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those, you know, it's like skeletons and that kind of thing and blood and shit and, well, not literally shit, but it's um, it, it's it's used so much in metal, but you've got something special in that you have want something that uses that but does look really distinct, you know. Yeah, exactly. I think I think he's achieved that definitely. It's it's really iconic in terms of a piece of artwork. I think um, there were a couple of variants that we considered that didn't have the same visual impact and that kind of wow factor behind it. It didn't look as as nasty and as like as, as evil, really. To you know, use a crappy soundbite, but it's it's <laughs> right. It suits it suits the album in every way, and it was everything that we we wanted, and we didn't even have to go too far to get it so to speak cool um i believe this is the first album released from napalm i think all the previous ones were out on earache yeah um what was it about napalm that um attracted you to signing with them it was a it was a two-way conversation really around the sort of time matt was thinking of quitting uh we kind of got not bombarded but there were a few interested parties that wanted to know what we were up to that got wind of us doing a new album um, we had dialogue with them. We had a bit of back back and forth with them. We, we laid the cards on the table in terms of Matt leaving the band. Um, we said, "Look, is this going to damage you know the relationship and the the interest that you have in us?" And at no point did you say yes to that. They were all really really positive, and all they wanted is demos. So we did the demos. We 
sent off the material. We talked about the, the new lineup going forward and if they were happy with that. And everything just went really well. So we, we, it was a no-brainer, really, for us. Mm. Um, they, all they've done so far is be really positive, really supportive, um, and done everything a label should do. Good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most bands are speak to are on the on the very happy about it. So, yeah, I, I think I think it's I think it's a very very good choice for us. We've got some great label mates, um, mm. a very active label, and if you look at bands maybe like Ginger and stuff like that, they've worked wonders for them in terms of their growth and their online persona and how they're perceived and all that kind of stuff and. Just generally, the the size of the band has multiplied based on that working relationship. So if we can garner a part of that for ourselves, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I would, I think this is going to give Eval a, um, a well deserved shot in the arm. You know, it's, it's really going to help um, stamp that name back on people. Yeah, so that's what we need. Uh, obviously, we were stagnant for a little bit and not ourselves. Hiatus for numerous reasons, mm. uh, not not by choice. It just kind of happened, and we went along with it. Um, but hopefully, now with a decent label, a really strong album, we can get back out and be m- more active than we've been, and um, yeah, start snowballing that thing all over again. You know, get back to where we should be. Yeah. Um, well, on the album itself, you've also um, made the decision. I think it's the first time. You've got a cover as part of the official track listing. <laughs> yeah. Um, before you've done Cemetery Gates and a few others. Uh, this time it's Mortician Zombie Apocalypse, which is um, appropriate. Yep. <laughs> um, was was the current pandemic an influence on your decision to cover this song, or was it just <laughs> since it's more all spaced out? Really, all really wanted to chomp on the bit and kind of do something a little bit heavier than we've ever attempted. and. Yeah that being one of his favorite death metal songs and one of his favorite death metal bands and the the feel of the track and just how it plays it fits so well with the rest of the material on the album it was a it was a no-brainer not to do it what we expected though is to record it and the label say oh we'll release that in a couple of months after the album we'll do it as a a limited edition thing and work off the back of it and they, they wanted it in the album, so <laughs> we had to we had to kind of put it in there now. So, <laughs> but it, but like I say, it fits really well. That it's it's very um, yeah. It, it's not like it, it jumps out as a cover either. It, yeah. it, it fits in the the tempo and the pace and the feel of the album so well that you, you if you didn't know it was a cover, I don't think you'd notice it wasn't us. Yeah, it's also a really cool. Um band to pick as well. I think uh, everybody covers Slayer and Megadeth and whatever else, so not so much Megadeth anymore. But um, you know, there's certain bands that always get covered. So with a band yeah. like Mortician, that's a really cool um, way of going about it. Yeah, yeah I think so. And I'd, I'd like them, if they heard it at some point and thought it was pretty cool, I'd, I'd be devastated if they hate it. We, we've tried to do it justice, but we've tried to do it with our sound, if that makes sense. So yeah. It's still got the still got the pace. It's still got the intent behind it. Um, I think it works. I, I wish we'd written it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be people listening to it that think you did. So yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> but credit where credit's due. It's it's a great original version to to try and recreate anyway. So you know, without that track existing, we wouldn't have been able to you know try and rework it a little bit for ourselves. But yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of songs that you did write. You've yep. got, you already released the title track and uh, Gore. Um, obviously, Hell Unleashed had the uh, the full music video treatment. Excuse me. Um, has it been difficult to uh, film together with all restrictions and that kind of thing? No, the, the video shoots we did, we, the first one for Hell Unleashed, uh, we did in London and... It, it was a full shoot. They they really, really made it a COVID-safe shoot. So we were shooting parts one at a time. Um, if you look at the floor plan and how the shoot was designed, we were all so far away from each other while we were shooting and they had to use really long shots and things like that. It was the mo- one of the most professional shoots I've ever, ever seen in terms of how secure and safe and how everyone was looking out for each other. 
the, the, it was just brilliant to do. We went, we went down there thinking, oh God, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, we're working and we've got to do this because obviously we didn't want the schedule of the label to slip any further back than it's already been eight years, you know, we don't want it to drag anymore. We need to get this done. So we did it, we did it as safe as we could. Uh, I'd, I'd been in hospital previously, like I got out three days before the shoot. Um, and then obviously not COVID, something else. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, so that was kind of that urgency to get that done was there. And then the same one when we did um, the same way coming up to do a shoot in Huddersfield, the same crew, um, yeah. we did it somewhere in a, a big warehouse in Huddersfield. And the same kind of situation applied, really. We did it with as little as little possible, the safest way we could, and just got it done. Yeah. And it, well, it, it looks great, yeah. Really. Change of the you know, change of pace, doing something productive and professional in the capacity we're all locked down in at the moment. It was nice to get out of the door and do something like that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, especially, like you say, it's been eight years anyway. So... I think th th maybe there was a, a doubt in the back of your minds that at a time when the world is shut down, this is maybe the last time you expected to reconvene. But yeah, it's, very much so. Uh, um, how long have you been um, sitting on the album? When did you finish recording it? Um, we recorded it within the space of a, a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks tops in September. Okay. Uh, we we had a. We had, well, personally, I had two weeks straight drumming to get up to playing spec and get the album tracks cemented in my head. Mm. Um, when I got down to the studio, we, we got told we had a, a really brief window in uh, Andy Sneep's studio in Belper. Um, and we recorded with Chris Clancy and everyone's schedules became free at the, the right time. So I got on the phone and on emails and just said, look, we've got a chance to do an album in like two, three weeks time. Are you free? Can you do it? Like, yeah, definitely. So that's how it came about. We, we had a very brief run through. Um, I gave myself five days to do the drum tracks and I got them done in three, which was brilliant for me. That's the quickest I've ever got drum tracks down. Yeah. Um, and left the rest of the, you know, fortnight, three weeks, whatever it was, to get the guitars tight, to do the vocals, make sure everything felt right. And yeah. So the whole album cycle, like getting it in the studio, getting out, three, four weeks tops. Oh, dear. That's yeah. quite impressive, yeah. man. I mean, you'd be amazed the amount of bands I've been speaking to and like their latest albums, they've been sat on them for about a year or so because of even yeah. Cannibal Corpse. They finished recording last April. Yeah. I mean, with the, we, we've had the tracks for a while. And yeah. There's been that many reworkings of other stuff that didn't go on the album. When... When this opportunity came and we worked out our per personnel issues and things like that we just decided to get on with it we had to otherwise we'd still be sitting around with half written material just going well we're in lockdown when are we going to do this the chance came up and we just went yeah let's do it yeah got to be done really you know yeah. and um but uh going back to the uh two singles something that obviously we can't really ignore is that you've got brian Posehn doing guest vocals on gore yeah, he did. And he did so weird, you know. Cult as well, I believe. Sorry, he did. He did guest vocals on Cult as well on Five Serpents oh. Teeth, um, and he's always been a fan of the band from what I gather from all. And I think all just sent him an email saying, "Do you want to do some backing vocals again?" And he jumped at the chance. So he, he all I think just told him to repeatedly shout the word "gore" yeah. as many times as he could with as much ferocity as he could um, and then we manipulated it and worked it into the into the single i think that's what happened <laughs> so yeah he's contributed to backing vocals he's not actually in the video which a lot of people seem to think he is but he's not no he's, yeah <laughs> living in the states it makes that kind of difficult yeah absolutely um it's interesting as well you know he's, he's a he's a known comedian he's a very funny man and he can act as well Yes. Yeah. Oh, you got a comedian and actor. No, he's not in a video. He's, he's doing guest vocals, and that must really confuse some people. I mean, when I saw that he was credited on the on the track listing, I thought, oh, there's like a spoken word bit or something like that. Because I'm thinking metal by numbers and all that kind of thing. Guy getting gunked at the end. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but no, it opens up possibilities for when we get to the States and things like that. You know, like if he ever wants to come to a show and, you know, if he's, if he's around and he's up for it, he's always welcome to jump on stage and join in. You know what I mean? It's, it's always good having people like that around. Um, we, we actually asked Bill Bailey if he wanted to do some guest vocals once before. Yeah. And uh, apparently he'd have been really up for it, but he was busy the week we were in the studio, so his agent had to decline. But, you know, the, the fact that he's a metalhead and he likes, you know, the stuff and whatever, it's it's pretty good to know. Yeah, man. I would have yeah. loved that. <laughs> yeah, no, so would we. <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. it would have been a bit different from his uh, Billy Bragg collaboration anyway. Yeah, yeah. or his Metallica <laughs> squeaky horns. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ben, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me this evening, mate. I really do appreciate it. Um, dude, thank you.